Hello, my little stars, and welcome to another than if Underfell. By the top pedal 16, this is Sansa's romance route with partial voice acting, not full voice acting, but either way. This also contains my sprite that I made for Underfell Sansa, like my original one where I used one from the Bonely Hearts Club. So, let's just get on with it. Five likes on this video, and I will upload the Sans proposal bonus scene as soon as five likes are hit. 10 likes and I will upload the papyrus route next for you guys, okay? So 5 guarantees you the bonus, 10 guarantees you the papyrus route with the partial voice acting. Alright, so how is this structured? Plain and simply, I go through this and I cover the scenes that only feature sounds. And you also get to hear a tiny bit of Asgo talking as well. Right, there was a bunch of other stuff I was supposed to say, but I just want to get this up for you guys because, yeah, I kind of have a schedule that I need to keep to, and also we got another game coming, so yeah. I hope you guys are going to enjoy. Definitely show your appreciation for the series because this took a lot longer to record than it should have. And also there is a fan in the background because this was recorded when it was during the hot weather. So, yeah. All right, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Off you go, enjoy, have fun, and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so let's begin. So first of all, we've already completed the section with the ruins. Again, I'm only going to focus on scenes where Sans appears or where we hear him, okay? So that being said, by here we've just gone a little bit ahead into Snowden. We have yet to cause the snappy twig scene yet, so let's see if we can find a boy. It was completely silent in the snowy forest, except for your footsteps. You wonder what you will face. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Flabby raises his head. I haven't left the ruins in like a long time. The monsters outside are much stronger. Y you have to be careful. Crunch, crunch, crunch. You imagine the snow isn't comfortable for the flower either. Crunch, crunch. Flowey chuckles. <laughs> yeah, past Snowden, it warms up. It's only snow here. Crunch, crunch. Oh, you're about to ask why when crunch, snip, snap, crunch. Snip, snap, you stop walking. Uh, what's wrong? Flowey asks. You seem a little spooked, human. Oh, oh my, be still my beating heart, oh my goodness, red, underfell sounds, oh my goodness, you sound amazing, I cannot replicate that at all. Oh, uh, well, it's not that bad, I mean, you're close. No, I am nowhere close to your actual real voice here. You didn't step on anything that could make that sound, and you look around. <laughs> Draws a deep, gravelly voice, oh my goodness, oh my. Um, you let an eep and turn around to face the owner of the new voice. The monster is a skeleton, you think. He's short in stature but has a roundness to him that should be impossible for a skeleton. He wears a black with yellow striped shorts, a red shoulder neck and a black jacket with a fur lining. He lays you. What a cute noise. What other sounds do you make when you're poked? Red and pink eyes. Okay, now, let's see. You blush from this strange skeleton's words. The skeleton's grin seems to widen. The red lights in his sockets brighten. You're interesting. Till you are. You do well, we'll see what other colors I can make you. Oh my. Be still our beating heart, the promises. Oh my word. Let's see. You are so right in the phrase, you think you might spontaneously combust. You bury your face in your hands and let an odd squeak noise. It takes you a minute to recover, during which the skeleton keeps chuckling at you. You finally manage to calm yourself enough to meet his gaze. You shyly ask the skeleton, if that's a promise. Oh my. <laughs> sure, sweetheart. You smile. You still feel shy as you hold out your hand and introduce yourself. The skeleton adjusts his red gloved hands for a moment before he accepts your hand. Nice to meet you, sweetheart. The name's Sans. Sans a skeleton. 
You tell fans, it is nice to meet him too. So again, pay attention here. He adjusts his red gloved hand before he technically takes it. If he doesn't adjust it, he's 100% killing you with that damn buzzer. Sans lets out a small <laughs> You notice his teeth are carnivorously sharp and he has one gold tooth on his upper left side. You should come with me, sweetheart. Me, my brother, Sans says. That screams like a trap, Twinkle. Don't trust this smiley trash bag. Flowey loudly whispers in your ear. Hehe. <laughs> <laughs> you want to speak up and say that to my face, you weed? Sans snarls. What you doing with that thing, sweetheart? We're friends, you you bully. Flowey stampers out. Something a brute like you couldn't understand. <laughs> Is that so? Sans says. You're talking a big game for a weed in a backpack. How's about you hop out of that thing and we can have a nice little heart to heart? Flowey shrinks behind you, burying himself against the back of your neck. You offer a sweet smile and hold up your hands in a calming gesture. There's no need to fight. You're, you'd be happy to meet his brother, especially if his brother is anything like him. San seems mollified. Well, uh, alright. Little shit ain't worth the effort. Come on, sweetheart. San takes the lead. You notice he doesn't sink in as deep into the snow like you do, in fact. He doesn't leave any footprints behind. The snow quickly morphs and fills up the holes behind him. It's a curious thing to watch. You glance behind you and notice that your footsteps are also being refilled by the surrounding snow, although it happens at a much slower rate. You ask Sans about it. Uh, what, surface snow doesn't? Sans asks you. You tell him no. Probably because of the magic then, says Sans. He shrugs. You don't have a lot of magic on the surface, do you? You actually do. Huh? Sans pauses in his walk. He looks up and squints at the ceiling. Then probably because... She you ever goes through a pattern, right? Where falls, gets on, rises, makes cloud, which then snow or rain. Rinse and repeat. You confirm that's correct. You're impressed about his knowledge about the surface weather. <sighs> Whatever. He says, although you notice he's smiling. <laughs> here are the temps the same in each zone. Chilly here, hot in Hotland, so on and so forth. But the magic. Sans taps the snow with his foot. It's everywhere here. Everywhere. Whole place is so drenched in magic that the environment sometimes does its own thing. We don't get clouds for snowy days. Snow leaks out of the ceiling. Probably pulled from one of the rivers. Absorbed into the zone since it's cold here. It turns to snow. That's amazing! Your red and pink eyes sparkle with wonder and Sans coughs. <clears throat> and she looks away from you, from your earnest expression. Not that neat, sweetheart. <laughs> it is, and it's wonderful that he knows enough about it to explain it to you. You sincerely thank him for that. You think you see his skull turn red, but he starts to stomp ahead of you before you can get a better look. Whatever. Come on, sweetheart. Keep up, will ya? You happily follow behind Sans. The path through the snowy forest leads out to a wide clearing, and Sans stops at the end of the path and points to the far right. That way we'll take you to Snowden, says Sans. Of course, you'll have to get approved to enter by the boss first. Boss? Yep. Sans puts his hand in his pockets. You should be here any second, sweetheart. Sit tight, okay? You smile and agree. This is really suspicious, Flowey says. It's fine, he's cute. Sans twitches. You didn't say it very loud, and you were whispering back to Flowey, but you get the feeling that he heard you. Flowey gives you a pity look. I'm starting to doubt your judgement again. You've got really bad taste in freaking soul date, mate things. What? You've got bad taste in men. That's okay. You still have you. You'll be okay. Sans, there you are, you lazy... Oh my god, Papyrus! Oh my word, Papyrus, your voice sounds amazing, my friend! Also, see, I was right to give him, like, a gruff voice. It suited him. Good lord. Good lord. Okay. I will include this, but I won't include the Papyrus fight. Since, you know, Sans is in this scene with Papyrus. There is a loud voice ahead of you. You see a skeleton in red and black clothes marching across the snow-covered plains. Even at a distance, you can see he's tall. 
taller than any human you've ever met. He strives across the snow with ease and stops short when he notices you. There is a good bit of distance between you and the new skeleton, but he is close enough that you can see his appearance. He has semi-closed eyes with two scars on his right eye and sharp teeth like sands. He wears a red scarf cape and a pointed black shirt, black trousers and long red gloves. He looks cool! Sorry for missing our meeting meet up time, boss, says Sans. His tone a touch nervous. You notice there's beads of red glistening sweat on his skull. I was uh, skirting this human. I can infer as much, Sans. Hello, human, says the skeleton. You introduce yourself with a smile. The skeleton tilts his head. A human who knows basic manners will Sans actually tell a funny joke next. Sans immediately protests that. Hey! Human, I will give you the honour of knowing my name. I am the Great Papyrus of the Royal Guards. It is my duty to capture or kill all humans who trespass into our kingdom. That is not good for you. Not good at all. You can send it out to respond because it really pretty much just told you that he was going to either capture or kill you. Lovely. It's either death or imprisonment. What lovely choices. Papyrus does not give you much time. Human, you have caught me at a good time. Oh, does that mean he won't try to kill you? His expression lightens to that of amusement. Ma <laughs> Don't be a shin. Instead, I will give you a choice. Surrender here and now and I will capture you instead of killing you. Or you may try to proceed and die in an honourable manner by my traps. Traps? Like puzzles? Yes, human. Oh, you love puzzles. You enthusiastically agree to try out the puzzles. Oh? Sam stares at you dubiously. What? Seriously? Yes. You were so disappointed in how the puzzles worked in the ruins. It's hard to get a read on Papyrus's mood. His face is difficult to read and his body language is standoffish. Your gut, however, tells you he feels hesitant. Uncertain, perhaps even unsettled, because why would any human be excited about freaking puzzles? I mean, there are some people being enthusiastic, but definitely not me. Depending on which one it is, if it's the fog maze, no, I'm walking the other way. These are not toys, human, they will kill you. Maybe, or maybe not, regardless, it's better than fighting Papyrus now. And who knows, these puzzles might be fun. Papyrus smiles at you. You wonder to yourself if he's putting on a front. Very well. How can I refuse such enthusiasm? Come here, brother. Sans gives a wink as he walks over to Papyrus. See you later, sweetheart. You blush and Sans looks pleased with himself. Papyrus watches the exchange with a narrowed gaze. You can't tell if he's unhappy or if it's his normal expression. Are you prepared, human? You jubilantly beam. Yes, you are. You can do this. What happened to my voice though? Why did he suddenly go like, you can do this? It went so high pitched. My goodness. Okay. So I'm going to quickly get through here. The sun's top by here? No, he doesn't. It's technically papyrus. Okay. So I will be back once we do this puzzle with papyrus. Okay. So now we've done the puzzle forward you cross the line drawn in the snow you did it you made it through the puzzles congratulations you're not a complete waste of intelligence wow says sans first try beginner's luck eh uh no twinkle is very smart flowey loudly says behind you well done human says papyrus you smile papyrus is eyes narrow do not get cocky human you say you're looking forward to the next puzzle then let us not dally Come, human, this next puzzle was put together by my brother. Oh, go Sans, looking uncomfortable, because he obviously didn't do it again. Papyrus M notices immediately. What is wrong, brother? <laughs> well, see, boss, I've been meaning to set it up. Really, I just didn't find the time. What do you mean you didn't find the time? All you do is sleep or drink at Grillby's. If you spend a fraction of that time, you spend loafing around on your puzzles. Papyrus stomps the ground, the red gleaming in his eyes, brightening. Sans winces from Papyrus' lecture. You offer to wait for Sans to put the puzzle together. Papyrus sighs slowly. 
Uh, no, no. Then we would be here all day. Let us simply move on to mine. You agree? You say you're looking forward to the next puzzle. Papyrus gives you an indescribable look. You can't tell if he's dubious of your claims or pleased. You hope he's pleased. You cross the plains. You decide to walk beside Sands. He gives you a wink when he notices. It makes you feel warm and happy inside. Ooh. There are many dead trees on the outskirts of the plains, along with patches of ice. That is difficult to walk. Papyrus and Sands remain completely unbothered by the terrain. Either the skeletons can use magic to make their journey easier, or they are simply accustomed to it. You look around as you walk. There's not much to see aside from the snow, ice, a cave ceiling, and dead trees. After some minutes of trekking through the snow, you can start to feel your toes go numb. You think it would be nice to get out of the snow soon. It is then that you spot a wooden bridge, and on the other side of the bridge you can see a building. A town! Stay here, human! Says Papyrus as he and Sans cross the bridge. You take time to inspect the bridge. It covers the chasm between the forest and town, and the chasm stretches to your right and left as far as the ice can see. You wait for them to cross. Once Sans and Papyrus arrive on the other side of the bridge, Papyrus awards you with a smile. Your manners have impressed me, human. You are the first of your kind to do so. That is just absolutely freaking terrible that we're the first. That surprises you. Were the other humans not polite? Your question makes Sans and Papyrus laugh. <laughs> Good joke, sweetheart. Sans laughs. The humans I have encountered would normally attack on sight, says Papyrus, or start acting hysterical. Sobbing, screaming, pleading, was embarrassing to watch, sneers Sans. Oh, oh dear, how uncomfortable. But as you have remained civile, civile company, I will give you a chance for the honour to face me, says Papyrus, if you make it across the bridge. You do not want to fight him. Wait, what's wrong with the bridge? Good of you to ask, human. Eunice Papyrus had his hand on a pedestal at the end of the bridge, and he pulls out a red crystal from the pedestal, and the bridge disappears. You and Flowey gasp. <gasps> this is a magical bridge. It will only exist so long as it has magic. Papyrus hoists the crystal into view. This is the crystal that supplies the magic. Papyrus places the crystal back on the pedestal, and the wooden bridge reappears. I will ask you a question. If you answer it incorrectly... If you answer it correctly, you may advance. If you do not, I will remove the crystal and you will fall to your death. You take a glance at the chasm between you and the village. You may, of course, refuse this challenge. Another snowstorm is due tonight, so you will likely freeze to death if you remain out here. <laughs> not much of a choice, is it? Papyrus laughs. No, no, not really. Huh. <laughs> This bridge is the only way into Snowden, says Papyrus. Your only way is forward. Either freeze to death from inaction, fall to your death from stupidity, or die by my hands in battle. None of those options are appealing, but you think at least one of those choices can be changed. You take a step onto the bridge and give Papyrus a grin, and you are filled with determination. Ah, uh, Sans, determination is back again. Oh, it's okay, Papyrus. <laughs> Please ignore Reaper Papyrus, he's having some issues. You will take on his challenge and you will win. Okay, so I'm just going to do this quickly. Uh, put in silence. Congratulations, human. You have the bare minimum of intelligence needed to fight me, says Papyrus. You thank Papyrus for the compliment. You think he's happy for a moment, but then his smile drops, and his posture shifts to stand off it again. He clears his throat. I will let you pass. You may visit Snowden for your final meal. I will be waiting for you at the end of town. If you keep me waiting for too long, I will hunt you down, so do not dally, human. It's nice he's letting you pass now. You're one step closer to being his friend. The thought of it fills you with determination. Gah! Please stop saying determination when Papyrus is right here. 
Meanwhile, Felbapyrus waits for you to reach the end of the bridge. As soon as your feet touch solid ground, you are instantly relieved. Well, enjoy your stay, sweetheart, says Sans. He waves goodbye to you, and he leaves. We made it to Snowden, Twinkle, says Flowey. Yes, yes you did, and you enter Snowden. Oh my goodness. Okay, so since I'm only going to be focused on scenes with Sans, I will get through Snowden and show the scene where Sans is. <laughs> be right back. Okay, so there's only one time we get to see Sans, and that is when we go into the bar. You notice a bar at the far end of the village named Grillby's, and you stupidly go inside. You step inside and are immediately greeted by warm air, the smell of greasy food and loud chatter. The loud chatter that immediately died as soon as you stepped inside. There were dozens of monsters in the bar, each one of them wearing a uniform vaguely similar to Papyrus. Oh, sweetheart, trolls out Sans from the bar. You're cute, but you're not smart, huh? Wow, thanks, Sans, thanks. You're welcome, honey. You don't have a chance to respond because one of the dog guards throws an axe the size of your, of you right at your freaking head. It was an accident. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Very funny, Sans. Hilarious. I cannot believe him. It was an accident. Yes, yes, I'm sure it was. Mm. It splits your head open in one clean swipe. You have died. Okay then. That was Sansa's one appearance here. And what an appearance it was. He just... He thought it was cuter that apparently I have no self-awareness when it comes to danger. He technically called me stupid. Yeah, but I meant it in a very affectionate way. I know, but you still tiny call me stupid. I just said that you weren't very smart. That's kind of you call me stupid. I love you. I love you too, but how dare you? I love you. How dare you? <laughs> okay, so here we are, of course, after the battle with Papyrus where we now get to talk to him. And I'm going to include this scene because we get to see Sans briefly in the next part, so. I do not understand. I tried to kill you repeatedly. You don't even seem angry. Papyrus shifts his weight uneasily. It's hard to read his expression, but you get the distinct feeling he's uncomfortable, remorseful. You remind him that you are alive now. But I, do you not think I am capable of achievement? We are 100% aware that you are capable of it. You have killed me more than once, my friend. No, no, you're quite sure he could kill you, and he has done so. However, you also think he could not kill you too. You think you two could be friends, really good friends. You give him a smile and hold up your hand. You would like to be his friend if he would accept it. Papa stares at your hand for several seconds. His hands are clenched into fists. You keep your hand out, patiently waiting. His voice is small when he asks you, Why? You tell Papyrus it's because you want to be on good terms with your future... Your future in-law. You think you hear the sound of someone choking in the background. <coughs> Sans, are you okay, Bethel? I'm fine. Are you choking on a chimichanga? No. That's what you get for eavesdropping. It was not. Yes, you were. But you can't be too sure because it's so thin. Papyrus cocks his head to the side. I do not fully understand your words, but I think I get your intentions. You also tell him you think he's great. That makes him smile. I am... <sighs> Very well, human. I will give you a chance to stay alive and I will let you call yourself a friend of the great Papyrus. Be grateful, human. I'm sparing you for now. You give Papyrus a hug. He stiffens immediately at your contact. It takes him a solid ten seconds to process what you've done before he starts to awkwardly pat your back. Uh, human, are you broken? You tell him this is what friends and future family members do. Again, you think you hear that choking sound, but you really can't be too sure. 
How strange. <laughs> yes, choke smiley trash bag. Flowey. What? He needs to choke, he's eavesdropping again. I see, sand choke quietly. Papyrus hesitantly hugs you back. Yay, you did it. You survived Snowden and made a friend. Is this normal? Papyrus asks Flowey while he hugs you. Yeah, says Flowey. Strange. Yeah, agrees Flowey. It's time to leave Snowden. Okay, you are currently romancing Sans. Good luck. All right, let's go find our boy again. Long story short, up to this point, we have literally gone through Waterfall and we have gone through the swamp part. We've met Shiren and we also got to meet the kids and we convinced them not to jump off the waterfall. So now we're going to talk to them and they at one point talk about Sans. There is a lolly and you know you have a chance to ask more questions. While you are curious about Undai, since she's likely to be the next monster you have to face, your mind wanders over to a certain skeleton. You ask the children about Sans. Their faces scrunch up immediately. He's mean, says Mon, and smelly. <laughs> he tells terrible jokes too, says Puffers. It's hard to believe he's related to Mr Papyrus. Yeah, he doesn't do anything but hang out a grill beast or patrol. He's a loser. You think back to Sans. You don't think he's a loser. Rather, you found him very charming. Not for the first time I question your judgment. Flowey whispers in your ear. The children give you a pity look. Puffer says, humans are surprisingly weird, huh? Um, your preferences aside, you don't think the children should be saying those things about Sans? Why not? Ravamp asks you. Eh, I guess he does work for Mr. Papyrus, says Mon. Is Sans part of the Royal Guards? Don't think so. The children exchange looks, each of them frowning. Puffer smooths out her hoodie. Actually, he might be. Otherwise, he wouldn't be allowed to patrol. I mean, you could. You just, you don't have to necessarily ask anyone, can I patrol? You could just be walking back and forth and secretly patrolling, just like, no, no, I'm just going for a walk. But that can't be right. To join the Royal Guards, don't you have to be, like, really strong? Which, Sans is very strong. It's just the kids don't know that. Yeah, no way that mustard-smelling lazy bones is strong. Maybe Mr. Papyrus asked for an exception for Sans to be able to patrol in Snowden. The children nods amongst each other. Hmm. So in order for Sans to be allowed to patrol, he's supposed to be part of the Royal Guards. But the children don't think he's strong enough for that. What do you think? Mm. You think he's part of the Royal Guards, but, you know, at the same time, he's got a much more important job, which is um, being a judge. Thinking back to your first encounter, you can feel your cheeks turn red. You wonder when you'll run into him again. You'd love to spend more time with him. And you clear your throat. Okay, well, I'm going to skip ahead because I don't want to face and die, and I don't need any more freaking nightmares. Thank you very much, so... We'll be back when we run into our skeleton of the hour. Okay, so up to this point we have gone through the lab and we have just headed into Hotland. And of course we saw none of them sands. So let's just get on with it, shall we? When you cross another bridge you spot a familiar figure. It's Sans and he seems to be sitting seated behind a wooden sentry pose. You happily go over to Sans. Sans spots you. He gives you a wink. Hey, sweetheart, fancy me you here. Your face feels hot. You don't think it's from the weather. You tell him you're happy to see him. And he gives you a smile. Want a chimichanga, sweetheart? First one's free, just for you. You would love one, thank you. He flicks one finger up and you watch a chimichanga floating to the air. It hovers between the two of you for several seconds until it's placed atop of your head. You take the chimichanga off of your head. Curious why you put it on your head. Sorry, I didn't realize you had free hands. I was too busy staring at more important things. Sans leans forward, his sharp grin turning into a crooked smirk. Like what? Sans leers. What do you think, sweetheart? You can't even hide your face because your hands are full with the chimichanga. 
You know you're blushing. You can feel your ears burn, but there's nothing you can do. Flustered, you lower your gaze and fidget. <laughs> Sounds chuckles, seemingly pleased by your reaction. Take a bite. Promise it'll be good. You try the chimichanga, and it is indeed good. In fact, it's very good. A lot better than when he tries to freaking kill you with a goddamn chimichanga. Surprised? Sun teases. I'm pretty good, huh? The boss makes a mean lasagna, but me, I prefer the simple food. Stuff you can take on the go. Sans absentmindedly taps his knuckle against the wood as he watches you. You ask who's there. He freezes at your question, and his red people shrink. You guess that it's the skeleton's equivalent to white eyes, and then he suddenly grins. Cheese. Cheese who? He points to you and winks. Cheese is a very cute human. Oh my god. Oh no, your poor heart, Sans, no. But technically it was MC that started that, how dare you? You reflexingly crunch the chimichanga in your hand. It makes Sans laugh as you profusely apologizing for wasting the food. I'm so sorry. Forget about it, he says, seemingly delighted. Here, got plenty. He offers you another one. The one you crush is levitated out of your hand and placed in a trash can behind his pose. Well done, recycling. As you start to eat your next one, he looks you up and down. Hey, knock knock. Who's there? His red gaze brightens. Waiter. Waiter who? Just wait, I get my hands on you. You choke on your chimichanga and reflectively destroy it again in your voice script. <laughs> Sounds house again, sweetheart? You apologize. It's technically his fault he keeps making you do it. Frantically trying to clean up the mess you made since the contents of the chimichanga exploded onto the sentry post. Knock, knock, says Sans with a grin. You whimper as you ask, who's there? And so Sans proceeds to tell an onslaught of increasingly dirty knock-knock jokes that make you feel like you are bathing in lava. In the lava below. It's delightful. Some make you squeal in embarrassment and others have you a giggling mess. Sans eats up your reaction, genuinely delighted. He praises you for being his best audience and as thanks, he offers you his water ball. It's gracefully accepted. You do try to ask him some harmless questions, favorite colors, tastes, and music, food preferences, but he has the talents for sidestepping your queries. Nevertheless, you still have a lot of fun with him. Unfortunately, it doesn't last as long as you'd like. I've got to get going, he says. Got to meet with the boss, you know? You pout. Eh, don't worry about it, he says. Knock, knock, sweetheart. Who's there? Owl. Owl who? I will be seeing you again, right? Absolutely. He winks. Good, if you get through the city, I'll be waiting. You bean, you hope it'll be a date. His smile slips for a bit. You think he looks sad for a moment, but then the grin is back in place. Yeah, just have to find out, huh? Oh, God. Then his whole body shivers out of existence and he disappears in a pop. Oh, it looks like Sans can teleport. That's neat. Oh, and he left you another chimichang and some more. That's sweet. Uh, but it's not though, because when you suddenly realize why he slipped there, it's because you are getting closer and closer to wretched judgment hall. And yeah, he has to do his job. He knows he's grown fond of you, but the problem is he's still got a job to do and he's going to try to wreck you. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna go and head off to find Sans again. He can't hide from me forever. Okay, so this is another intricate part to Sans's route where upon entering the city, we see a bunny monster who's trying to get our attention. So I'm gonna also include this in because this really is an interesting and important part when in terms of like Sans's romance route. So let's head over, intrigued. The bunny monster smiles at you. He's a head taller than you and is wearing black overalls and a red tilnick. Aid, you're Twinkle, right? You confirm. Great, I've got something for you, he says. He reaches into his cart. Cold air rushes out there and he pulls out a red colored ice cream cone and offers it to you and he smiles. One dice ice cream cone. Dice cream? The sweet treat you gamble on, it's not always sweet, he says. Sans asked me to give you one. Your red and pink eyes brighten. Sans? Yeah, he was here just a minute ago. Told me to make sure you got a good one, he says. You happily accept the treat. When you take a bite, you find that it's pleasantly sweet. He was very clear, sweet little twinkle, says the monster. No gambling this time round. It's delicious. 
The bunny takes a bow. Well, thank you. He straightens up. I'm Tub, by the way. If you haven't already gathered, I sell ice cream. You ask him if you normally have to gamble on ice cream. Most of the time, yeah, but I'll make an exception for friends, he says. Sans isn't someone you say no to, you know? You nod. You know, he's very charming, isn't he? Tom loves that. Oh, <laughs> you're funny. Oh, before I forget, he gives you a wink. Money's puffer sends all regards. You beam and you tell him you were delighted to make her acquaintance. Hey, <laughs> she told me, he says. You finish your ice cream too quickly. If you're still around tomorrow, you can have a free one on me, he says. That's so nice. And you thank him and head on your way and you enter the core. Oh, blooming neck. Oh, no. Okay, so now we're going to go in there. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to do the part with us going into that place. Then we're going to do the part with Metatron and then it's my least favourite section that I need to tackle and I absolutely hate having to do this one. Also, I apologise if you can hear any construction work there, doing construction next door. And if you hear the fan, I'm just going to keep it in because, honestly, it is it is unpleasant here. And part of the fan is actually muffling the sound of, like, the construction. So, you have a choice. Either you want to hear the fan or you don't want to hear the fan. Either way. Let's see what happens next. Okay, so now we're at the city where we've met Metaton, and Metaton has asked us that ever so favorite question. Human, do you love anyone? Metaton leans towards you. Tell me, darling, is there anyone, anyone at all in Underfell that has caught your attention? You immediately think about Sans. You can't resist smiling at the thought of him. Oh, that looks like a yes. Kajasha? You shyly say Sans. Metaton's eyes widen. It sounds as in the annoying stinky skeleton with a temper as short as he is. That is extremely not nice. It is extremely true, Metaton says and caringly. He immediately puts his hands back under your soul to check if you were, were lying. You repeat yourself so he knows you aren't. Metaton is a gasp. Really? Him? You immediately start to defend sound, but Metaton cuts you off with a wave of his hand. They say love is blind. In your case, they're right. You say he's very funny. He tells knock-knock jokes. Metaton says flatly. An indescribable note in his voice. As if he cannot believe anyone would find knock-knock jokes funny. You, re you reiterate that he is funny and you like his jokes. Ugh, is all Metaton says in response to that. You also add that he's been very nice to you. You talk about how he introduced himself to you and how he guided you to Snowden. You mention the chimichangas and how delicious they were. You tell Metaton about the dice cream. I get it, I get it. He's polite to you, he says reluctantly. Is that all you really like about him? You say you haven't known Sans for long. You'd like to get to know him better. That's something, I suppose, says Metaton. I think that's the strangest thing about you now. You frown at that. Sans is very charming. Sure, darling. Sure. Oh, she's a little bit crazy, this one. He is! You start to feel offended, and Metaton is not the first monster to question your budding crush for Sans. You don't understand why they're so turned off from him. You're also flabbergasted by how openly disdainful they are. Metaton looks out at the crew behind the spotlight. He squints his eyes briefly. Oh dear, it looks like we're out of time today, Twinkle Darling. Ah, uh, thank you for coming on. You say you were happy to, though you don't feel like the feeling was mutual. Anyway. Sure, darling. Metaton pulls your head forward and gives you a friendly kiss on the cheek and it feels like a small static shock. The spotlights and cameras turn off. You rub on your cheek and it tingles. He says, as promised, you are now free to go. Although I do recommend looking around the city before you head up. You smile and say you will. Metaton's smile softened as he looks at you. It doesn't feel as false or overly excited as it did before. You really like Sans. You do. Sans is... Metaton waves two hands. Unique. Can't say I'm fond of him, but he is one of the few friends Alphys has, which means I'm obligated to tolerate him. You give him an, an impressed look. No one should have to tolerate him. Sans is fun to be around. 
agree to disagree, darling, he says. Although I hate to have you leave here upset with me, so how's about I make it up to you? How so? If Sans isn't drinking at Grilby's, he's drunk at Snowflakes, he says. When you leave the building, go left. Follow the road until you get to an intersection with a sign that has a bird on it. Go right. There's a, com a comedy club named Snowflake down the street. Down that stretch of the path, you might find him there. You bean! You'd love to find Sans again. I can tell, he says. Metaton winks to you. Break a leg, darling. Stay safe. Oh, this one's crazy. You say you'll stay safe. Okay. Straight to the snowflake, you try and find Sans. Okay, so we're gonna go now. I'm gonna skip down. I'm gonna probably read all this. The snowflake is a white and blue themed comedy club. The light is dimming in the dining area. It is a crowded club. The bar is full and there are only a couple of empty tables. You clutch at the small bag of money you have as you look around. You don't see Sans. Maybe he'll stop by later? Besides, while the chimichangas were delicious, you'd love to try some of the authentic monster food. A witch comes by and helps you get seated. She's a falcon-like monster with pretty blue rings, and she whispers to you, I saw you on Megaton's show. You were adorable. You thank her with a smile. Once seated, she gives you a menu and leaves. As you peruse the menu, you listen to the, com the comedians up on stage. He's some kind of bird snowflake monster. The comedy is good, but you can't hold your attention it's not his fault it's just well after having so much fun with sans it's hard to compare you wish sans was there it's hard to believe you've only known him for a day all of this has taken place in a day oh my goodness the fact that it has only taken place in the day is ridiculous to me um calling it a crush feels too small but you're afraid to use any other word the sword skeleton has been in the back of your mind since you met him each encounter with him leaves you wanting more you like spending time with him. You like his smile. You like his laugh. You like his eyes. You like his jokes. And you like his voice. You know it's superficial at this point. You don't know him as well as you'd like. He neatly sidestepped your question. But you really, really like to change that. Your heart and soul tell you that you could come to truly care about him. If only he'd give you a chance. You think he likes you. You hope he likes you. What a lovely smile you have, says a soft voice. You look up to see a red cat-like monster in a waiter's outfit. The monster smiles at you. You look like a lady in love. Butterflies swarm in your stomachs and you realize you've been smiling the entire time. Here you are, the waiter says as he places a red and pink drink on your table. Courtesy one gentleman. He said it was for his sweetheart. You blush and quickly look around, hoping to spot him. You don't see him anywhere. You frown and look back to your drink and you ask the waiter what it is. Ugh, fudge. It's called the final hour, says the waiter. A cool, refreshing drink meant to put any mind at ease and guarantee to give you a sweet dreams if you take it a few hours before bed. Oh God, because this is foreshadowing judgmental. He gives me this so that way then I'll just slip away. It's supposed to like make me peaceful and kind of like relaxed. <sighs> you give it a sip. Mm, it's a light though. You can feel the magic inside. Perhaps it's enchanted to give sweet dreams. Although you don't plan on sleeping anytime soon, maybe San picked it out because he likes it? Ha! Ha ha! Pippy, that's not why he chose it. He chose it because he wants to make this as, like, pleasant and as, like, least painful way as possible for me. As the waiter leaves, you take the time to enjoy your drink. The comedian can't make you laugh, but thinking of Sans is all you need to do to keep the smile on your face, and you decide to take a walk around the city once you're done. Okay, so I'm going to go now and go and uh, get to the next scene with Sans. Oh gosh, darn it all, you all know what this is. It's freaking judgment all the time. Oh, okay. Oh god, okay, brace yourself. This is where I'm going to freaking rage. When you step off, you enter a long corridor filled with golden light. There were stone pillars of creamy gold with chisel design lining up the corridor. The tile floor is a mosaic with a beautiful swirling motif. All on the walls are windows that filter in a golden light, and it reminds you of the golden hour on the surface, with how softly warm it is. It has a tall ceiling, tall enough that with each step you take, it makes an echo. What a pretty place! And it looks like you aren't alone. You see sands, and your heart skips a beat. 
A surge of happy butterflies merrily dance in your stomach and you cannot stop the smile on your face as you quickly quicken your pace to meet him. Then you notice something is off. Wrong. You slow down until you stop. You are more than a dozen steps away from him and you want to go to him but something holds you back. He's looking at you. He has a sharp toothy grin on his face but you don't see any warmth to it. His scarlet eye lights are burning as they meet your red and pink. The butterflies have turned into knots. You hesitantly smile at him. Knock, knock. His grin becomes crooked. That's better. That feels more genuine. Who's there? Ben. Ben who? Been thinking about you all day. For a few seconds, his face looks pained. Then, that sharp grin is back, and you can't read him anymore. It hurts you more than you expected. He says in a quiet voice, I know, sweetheart. You take a step forward, and he steps back. Your brow frowns. You know, San shifts his weight side to side. I saw you on that show. You perk up. You were great, he says. Real cute. Real sweet. Real believable. Red. Beads of sweat start to form his forehead. I want to. You know, I want to. His grin stretches over his face. It stretches so wide it hurts to look at it. You know he's forcing it. Why is he upset? You're real sweet, he said. Real sweet. Think you'll dream of me when you're asleep? You tell him yes. Huh. I hope it'll be a nice one then, he says. And then you're impaled straight through the head. Sweet dreams, sweetheart. <laughs> and so it begins my descent into madness. You stumble out of the elevator with wide eyes. He killed you! He killed you! Why? Because he wants you to die, okay? It's the most merciful thing he can do for you. But he's about to annoy the shit out of me. You see Sans there at the end of the hallway. You raise a hand to your forehead where he had impaled you with something for an instant death. Ah, he says when he sees you. You're back, huh? Knew I was remembering stuff today. You're one of them special humans. Guess I shouldn't have expected less from my sweetheart. Fucking trust my luck. He knows? How much does he know? His golden tooth glints in the warmth lighting as he smirks. You ain't the first and you won't be the last human with a soul strong enough to hang on after death. Sans tilts his head. <laughs> he stretched out his arms wide. Over a hundred humans have come to Underfell. Not one has made it out of life despite their specialness. Can you guess why? You shake your head. Papyrus has captured 20 humans and killed two of them. And I killed 15 and captured five. Who do you think handled the rest? Your stomach drops. You feel cold sweat on the back of your neck. You don't want to say it out loud. You don't want to consider it. But your mind has already made the conclusion. It is freaking Sans. Allow me to reintroduce myself, sweetheart. Sans gives you a mocking bow. I'm Sans Gaster, the judge. I've encountered 60 humans and I have killed 60 humans. Sans straightens up and your sharp, cheesy smile is cold. I see him coming through the ruins and if they're weak enough, I lift them through. Want to give Pops a chance to have fun, you know? Like any good brother. But the ones with levels, I take care of them. And the ones that are weak and slip through, I clean them up here, in this hall. My hall. He puts his hands back in his pockets. You ask why Sans has his name redacted in the monster book. In the boss monster book. He stares at you for several long seconds. I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell you. It's simple. No one wants to be the judge. He points to himself. But I got the lucky draw because my magic's special. You give him a small smile and you slightly say you were drawn to him right away. You knew he was special. Not the kind of special one looks for in date me, sweetheart. <laughs> he chuckles. My magic? My attack? Cause intense pain for certain chumps, especially anyone with an LV. You know what an LV is? You shake your head. Figured. You're at zero, so why would you? LV means level of violence, he says. He's trapped by your soul. You raise it when you gain XP. By XP, I mean execution points. He rolls his weight to the back of his heels. For we were sealed. The judge acts as the judge and executioner for the kingdom. Citizens up for trial get a taste of the judge magic. Their pain seals their fate. You ask Sans if he is judge and executioner. Yep, he says. The previous one was my old man. I got his magic, so when he dusted, I took his place. You're sorry to hear that. Why? He asks. I'm not going to change what's going to happen to you. It's always terrible when kind people feel they need to do unkind things. He grimaces. You don't know shit. Stop talking like that. You understand why no one would want to be the judge. You ask him if he wants you to keep quiet about it. You've got nerve thinking you're getting out of your life. He mutters crossly. You feel good about your chances. 
you reinstate your question. It's not something I advertise, he reluctantly admits. People get worried. Worry around the title. Most monsters think my pot was the last one. Does his brother know? One of them, he says vaguely. It's really only one, only person who needs to know. Oh, you're reassuring me you will not bring it up to anyone without checking with him first. <laughs> you really think you're getting out of here? You know you will. I was tempted to let you go, darling, he says. Really was. You, you know? But then I saw you on that show and, well, his grin seems self-deprecating. No, I can't. Fuck you. It's... It's because we said about humans and monsters, and he's like, shit, my human, this human I've grown to like, is going to mess up everything. You saw something red, but it's still too fast for you to process, and he kills you again. Fuck you for making me do this. This isn't my fault! You have a choice if you like me, like me. Why are you trying to kill me? <laughs> you were in Pale Street through the head. You've died. You take a deep breath when you step off the elevator. Oh, lovely. The freaking music is like, bam, 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 na, 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 I, I hate this so much. <laughs> okay, let's do it then, sons. You ready for this, baby boy? We're going through this again. Welcome back, honey. He mocks when he sees you. Did you have a good day at work? You tell him, it's been a long day at work. You would love to relax with him. Shit, babe, that does sound nice, huh? Yeah, it does. You suggest they could watch a movie together. Uh-huh. He goes, no. Biscuits. You tell me you don't want to fight. I know. He says, that's the fucking issue. You're about to spawn, but you see him raise his right hand. I actually like that shit, too. How is that my fault? And also, it doesn't say I like that shit, too. It says I like comedy, too. <laughs> but still. Red sharp jagged bones are conjured in the air around him. They shoot straight up to him and impale you through the head. It's another it's a death. You've died. You clench your hand into tight fists and march for the purpose when you step off of the elevator. Stop freaking killing me, Sans! When you step off of the elevator, this time, you clench your hands into tight fists and march for the purpose. Stars above! Stop coming back! He complains. No! He needs to stop killing you! You want to say, The hell you ain't! You're a huge threat! You feel a strange sensation grip your soul. It feels like a tight hand around you, and you are lifted off the ground. Stop grabbing me! Stay dead. You return to go and instantly die. No. You refuse. You will not die. You will not retire. You shout that at Sans the second you step up the elevator. Fine, he snarls. We are doing this the hard way, baby doll. You want to know how I stop special humans from coming back? I break them. Your soul is ripped out of your chest and you are slammed into the ceiling. Again. Please stay asleep. You won't stay asleep. <sighs> You step up the elevator, you died, you died, you died, you died, you died, you died, you died. You died some more, and then you keep on dying, it's fine. Sans huffs when you walk back into the hall. You're still going, fuck your determination. Yeah, Sans. It's okay, Papyrus, it's a completely different one. Yes, you are, you are filled with Sans' summon bones from behind you to pierce the back of your head. Go to sleep. You sprint out of the elevator and roll to avoid the bone attack this time. It's the first time he managed to fight his opening attack in many, many deaths. He makes an annoying noise. Stars above you. Ain't making this easy. You give him a look of disbelief at his audacity. Okay. Your face pinned in my ends. You say you flatter to him. You give him a tired look. You tell him you don't understand why he's doing this. You aren't a threat. You would never hurt him or any other monster. That ain't the issue, he says. Your belief is what is dangerous. Huh? You think because you're nice, the other humans would be too. That ain't how it's been going, sweetheart. Over a hundred humans have fallen in here, and you're the first one to not attack or scream at us, he says. You're the exception, not the rule. That bear comes down, it's going to be another war. He can't know it for sure, and you can't know it won't, he says. Yes, you can. You know it won't. That there, that there is why you're so damn dangerous, he snaps. That's propaganda is lethal. Out there giving me, them, hope when there ain't any. Yes, there is. There's always hope for a bear tomorrow. And that bear tomorrow has finally arrived. Human and monsters can live in peace together. Bullshit! Humans have been living and growing and fucking for centuries. But as monsters, we've been stagnant. We ain't got the space to expand our population. So we stopped. We know humans outnumber us. A hundred to one. You break that barrier and it'll be a slaughter. You argue that won't happen. Humans have changed. It's cute of you to think that, he says. 
stupid, real fucking stupid, but cute. You feel the grip on your soul tighten. You can't move an inch from his magical grip on your soul. Stop coming back, he hisses out. He impales you through the head. You've died, and you linger in the elevator for a moment. Sitting in the elevator won't change anything, but you need a moment to collect yourself. You've died 56 times. All of Sam's kills have been instantaneous. You've not felt any pain from those deaths. But it is disorienting going from the golden hallway to darkness and then back within seconds. You take a deep breath. You run your fingers through your long hair. You can do this. It won't be easy, but you can do this. You still have your cheeks and macho. Oh, fuck me! He says when he sees you, do me a favor, sweetheart, and stop coming back. I got better things to do in my time than keep killing you. Yeah, how about, you know, spending time with me, hugging me and kissing me, huh? How about not doing your judge job for five minutes? You take a step forward, remaining firm. You think you can just outstubborn me? Sans laughs. <laughs> you think you can just throw in the towel and if you just, I'm going to just throw in the towel if you just keep coming back? Then you know how it'll work, toots. I will break you. You continue your walk forward and he glares at you the entire time. You make a few steps and then you feel that magical grip on your soul again. He sure loves to grow. He sure likes to grope me a lot. Stop it, he says. You ain't gonna win this one. You won't give up. Why, he asks. You don't know us. You don't know me. You got no reason to try so hard. You raise your chin. It's common sense to help someone who needs it. He flinches. I, I, we don't need help. You gesture through the window to the city below. The monster inside speak for themselves. You feel their pain. You feel their isolation. You feel their stagnation. They deserve to feel the sun. You tell sons he deserves to feel the sun. A shadow goes through him. His red eyelids waver in his sockets and he screams about, The fuck do you know? His grip on your soul tightens and he throws you back. It's not death, but it creates a purposeful distance. And he snarls with Venomin's voice. I see you're talking to you is useless. Fine, if you won't listen to reason, then we'll do it the old-fashioned way. I ain't gonna stop or slow down, sweetheart. Give up when you're done. You have died. It was over too quickly to realize what happened. You blink and you barely open your mouth to speak. When you die, and it keeps happening. All of your deaths have been so instantaneous you have not been able to register the pain before you were brought back to life. You're back to life too quickly to even feel his soul. But it's obvious what's going on. He doesn't want to cause you pain. All you can do right now is wait it out. That's fine. You can do this. You can wait for him. You lost count of how many times you have died. You keep dying and coming back. Until one minute, day, you don't know. Sound stares at you. His red eyes growing brightly. There's enough power behind his left eye that it's generating its own aura. A flickering flame of burning yellow and red. You're a fucking stubborn, he says. Always being nice all this time, all since you didn't hurt anyone. But not anymore. That was him being nice. I mean, technically it was, because you didn't feel any pain, right? So, yeah, that was technically him being nice. You were brutally impaled through both of your feet. Red bones stick out from the floor and pin your feet to where you stand. An immediate pain shoots on through you and... Ugh, you're fucking cry out in agony as more bones pierce through your shelters and into one of your arms and chains of your fresh falling to the ground and because bits of your bones sticking out to places where they're not supposed to be. Ew. Pain. There's only one thing to process. Dilapidating, agonizing, horrific pain. It hurts. It does not burn. It is not cold. It is not tearing. There is no sensation other than pain. Your whole body involuntarily shakes and you think you will die from the intensity of your agony, yet you are not allowed death. Nothing is hurt so much, and there's no comparison to this torture. No death comes close to the purposeful torment you are currently enduring. Pain, that's all you can process. Your soul is beautiful. Your loyalty is unwavering. You are the starlight they need. You are you. It's kind of cute that it says you are the starlight, because... Huh. That's cute that you're the starlight. Since, you know, Twinkle and Stars. I never had Starlight before. That's so cute. And you alone are enough to conquer this pain. Your determination flares. Gah! Sorry, Papyrus. Gah! Flares through you. The world becomes muted. You stop trembling. You can think again. Twinkle is Twinkle. You are you, and you're in a cage of bones. Your blood trips down your limbs, and Sans slowly walks towards you until he's close enough to touch. Hurts, doesn't it? He says softly. His red lights in his eye sockets tremble. More will be coming, sweetheart. Lots more unless you stop. Don't come back. He's finally close enough. He's finally in reach and you can feel his soul, although it remains hidden from sight. You... You reach out your hand to touch his cheek and you tell him, knock, knock. 
You reach out the hand, shed, shake, knock, knock. Your whole arm trembles from the gashes dug inside. You kindly close your hand into a fist because of the torn ligament. Your palm is drenched in blood. It sounds me to gaze. He seems to brace himself for something. Your gentle touch is not what he was expecting. As soon as you cup his cheek, you've seen a ray of emotions rapidly cross his face. Surprise, horror, disdain, remorse. And you whisper, knock, knock. You're so fucking stupid, he whispers. A bone shoots up from the floor and pierces your heart. It's a long death. You don't die immediately from a broken heart. You still feel the pain of every injury previously inflicted, although dulled due to your soul. And then all of that is doubled when you realize you can no longer catch your breath. Second in the air does nothing. The agony in your chest prevents you from doing anything. You keep your hand on his cheek and you give him a smile. And you see in his eyes you aren't the only one who has a broken heart. Because, yeah, this is hurting him so freaking bad to do this to you. He loves you. And the fact is he's going to have to live with this thought for the rest of his life that he actually has witnessed you die. Like, that is something that none of the others have to deal with. They never see you die. But Sans does. Sans doesn't just see you die once. Sans sees you die multiple times and by his hands. How much agony that must cause him every single day of his life that he calls that, that he had to do that. It's the last thing you can do before you die. Who's there? Please be you who's there. When you're alive again, he starts yelling at you. What the fuck? You want me to, like, really hurt you, huh? You think I won't? You think I'll just let you go if you keep up and at it? That ain't how it works. So stop. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. He clutches at his skull, red sweat dripping off him. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You idiot. You dumbass. You fuck you. Sounds is distressed. Red magic blasting off from him in malicious aura. A graveyard of bones shoots up in random directions from the floor, and you do your best to dodge the chaotic attack. Thankfully, you're actually gone pretty good at keeping yourself alive thanks to your previous encounters. Or maybe it's just the air in Underfell. You've never had to fight for your life on the surface, so you don't have any experience to compare it to. Fuck, fuck, fuck! He chants. He bends over and holds his skull. You can feel his soul is in knots, even at a distance. Your dress feels tight. Your soul yearns to reach out to him. Your loyalty propels you to make that first step, and you move forward. A huge push of raw magic makes you stumble, but you continue. You jump beneath a wild attack, and you sidestep a surge of bones. You're almost there. The hallway is filled with a white light, and it overtakes Sands. You can almost reach him. I'm done! He screeches, abruptly straightening up. Two white dragon skulls. Two! White dragon skull things with four glowing eyes. Materials above him and you can feel the air humming with magic as a red light builds in their mouths. You are close enough to Sans to do something and you tackle him and use your special attack. You tackle into him and use your entire body weight to pin him to the ground. He barely has time to light out it. Oof. When you grip either side of his skull and proceed to plant kisses all over his face, the dragon skull things immediately vanish above you. He freezes. His body stiffens in complete stupefied silence and you make it all the way to the 10th kiss before his brain unthaws and he reacts. What the fuck are you doing? He screeches, shoving you violently off. His whole skull is turned a bright red and he scrambles to pull his hood up. You can no longer see his face as he turns his body away from you. Are you fucking insane? You're crazy. You died one too many times, you dumbass. Why would you even think that was a good idea? You tell Sam that you like him. His head whips around and you can see the red lights in his eye socks have gone out in shock and his whole skull is tinged red from his magic overloading it's only a brief look because sans quickly turns back away you're crazy he mutters absolutely bashing insane i killed you a lot your mind sounds that you're alive right now but what that's the that's not the point you scoot closer to sand kiss the top of his head he convulses away from you frantically scrambling to put distance between you two stop that you apologize for making him uncomfortable you hope he'll at least be willing to talk things out with you instead of, you know, murdering you repeatedly. And if I don't, you just you just gently touch my face and k- do dumb shit, he demands. You say you'd happily do that without him killing you repeatedly. He flinches. I, but I... You smile at him. Stop, he whispers. I don't... You tell him you like him. You shouldn't, he says quietly. And yet you do. And you say you think he'd like the surface. Probably, he agrees with a mumble. You want to see a sunrise with him. His whole body sags. He hangs his head in his hands. Just, just go. You scoot close to him. Stop, he says. Leave for I change my mind. Nah, you got a better idea. Knock, knock. <sighs> Sam gives you a tired smile. Who's there? Ivor. 
Ivoru, I'm going to kiss you again. He chuckles and you lean forward. He doesn't pull away, so you give him another kiss. He rests his head on your shoulder, and he turns his head to press his mouth against your neck. You can feel his hot breath tickle you. Knock, knock, he says quietly. Who's there? I won't tell you. I want you. Who? Really? I want you too. He says, lifting his head up to give you a crooked smile. You laugh and you press your forehead against his. Huh. I give up, he says. You win. If you say he must have changed. <laughs> I want to believe in you. So I will. If you're wrong. He shrugs. Fuck it. At least I'll get to see the sun before I die. You reassure him you won't let him die. Maybe, he says. No, maybe. You promise him. Yeah. Okay, he says. The two of you sit there in silence beside each other for a long time until you remember the paper. You pull it out of your po pocket. Where the fuck did you get this? He asks you. You recount your journey through the lab. You also admit that you'd met Wingerdings. He, he what? Sun stares at you. In the void. He looks down at the paper. He seems to read it quickly, his eyelids moving rapidly. That dumbass! You ask Sans, what does it say? It, uh, you really want to know? Yes, you do. Sun shrugs. Okay. Okay, so pretty much, uh, I've read this before. It's just him confirming, like, how the void works that, you know, doing different testings and stuff. So there's no real point in me reading this again for, like, the umpteenth time. Oh, well, but I'll read it anyway. Research shows a human soul is capable of entering the void, but it causes immense strain. Captured human souls have only been you able to survive the void twice before evaporating. Infusing my magic in a soul has caused it to survive five times in a trip to the void. Testing with a regular monster magic resulted in two trip survival by Alphys. Testing with another boss monster magic resulted in a five trip survival, which is my magic. This seems to be an inheritance resistance to the void for boss magic. A human soul is still required to enter and leave the void, but the boss magic is required to survive it. I want to see what the human sees. I want to know what's in the void. Oh. This must have been written right for... He tried something. It's pretty messy, he says. He does this sometimes. Whenever he gets an idea, he barely remembers to write it down. For he gets tunnel vision. Sans gives you a long look. He's in the void. You confirm he is. You okay? He wants you entirely show. Dumbass, he says. Hoping you can hear me calling him a dumbass, dumbass. You offer to pass on the message. Do, he says. Because he's a huge dumbass. Going into the void without any warning or back. Didn't even think to tell anyone either from the look of how hastily scribbled this note is. Sans rubs his face. Ugh. You ask Sans if he knows how to help Wingy Dings leave the void. Not off the top of my head, Angel, he says. Maybe it can finkle something if I can look at his notes. Your eyes whiten. Is Sans a scientist? <laughs> I was. He says reluctantly. I worked with wings before he went missing. Oh, wow. What did Sans study? Uh, pretty good with machines and physics, he says. How wings build the core. That's amazing. Sans is brilliant. A slight reddish hue forms into his eye sockets. N not really. You reassure him he is. You ask what was the last project he worked on. Uh, it was a gun, he says. Space gun. Huh? You must have been to space, right? He asks you. At that, you nod and he continues. I'm one of the humans that came through... Had a book about space. Wanted to try and wreck play here. Asked for a weapon, so made a gun. Creates a bubble of vacuum that's supposed to mimic space. Oh. Only used it once, he said. Gave the subject to Al to take a look at. It was a long time ago. He rolls his shoulders. Human got a lot of guns, don't they? You suppose civilians aren't allowed to own lethal guns? He smiles crooked. What's a non-lethal gun? He explains citizens can purchase a status gun if they pass their psych evaluation. It will put a living being in a status. They'll be immobilized but unconscious. They're very expensive because they're fueled by magic, which is a dying resource. Only wealthy humans can have one. Do you have one? You've never felt the need for one. You doubt you ever will. I can tell, he says. You're too soft for your own good. You give him a sly smile. You think he likes your softness? Shut up, he says. The crimson hue under his eye socket spread further across the cell. Don't get smug. Let's see. You shift your weight to press against him and rest your head on top of his. Awfully cutting with someone who killed you a lot, he mutters. You can't see his face, but his skull feels warm under your cheek and you nuzzle him. After a long moment, he leans into you. Only indulging out of pity, he grumbles. Mm-hmm. Don't look into it. Mm-hmm. Sounds full silent. Ah. Uh, for once, the silence doesn't feel uncomfortable to you. Rather, it feels nice. 
Light filters through the golden tinted windows is warm. You can feel Sans breathing beside you and his soul, while hidden, is near yours. Comfort settles over you. You enjoy the moment and you hope you can have many more moments with him. That's that, he says. He pulls away from you and stands up in a fluid motion and he tugs his hood up. I gotta go. Where to? The boss first, he says. Don't face Asgore without me. Sit tight. Don't move. Where was that score exactly? You'll be in the throne room. He's always in the throne room, he says. If you really want to stretch your legs, go ahead. Just stay out of the throne room. Which, Asgore isn't even in the goddamn throne room. And then I still get told off when he's freaking Asgore's fault. He went wondering when he shouldn't have. Good. I'll be back as soon as I can. Uh, says Sans. You ask him what's wrong. Nothing, he says. Just anticipating getting scolded by boss. He offers you a half smile. See you later, Angel. He's gone in a shimmer of red. You've completed Judgment Hall. I only died 70 times. Yay. Oh. <sighs> okay. Wants to see a sunrise with you. All right. So what I'm going to do now is do the scene with the necklace. We're just going to skip over Asgore. And um, just resume where Sans is. I know everybody's like, but Twinkle, Asgore talks too. I know, but I don't really care if Asgore can talk. I don't really have, like, any sympathy for Asgore in this one. It's freaking Asgore. Also, ah, it brought back so much to Soul I remember how annoyed I got, like, the first time with Sans, and I'm reading back through this, and it bringing back, like, so much to Soul for me. I absolutely love Sans. Don't get me wrong. You've all seen me, how I react with Sans in, like, the original run-through of this. I absolutely love him so much. I love his argument. He makes good points throughout it all. And yeah, you know. Uh, he's just he, he's just one of those. He's like a cat. He's like one of those cats that doesn't want to be cuddled. But you definitely want to cuddle it because it looks so freaking cute. And you want to love on it. And he's like. Meow. That's what Sans is. Sans is like a cat. <laughs> we love our, our little catty skeleton. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the next part. Okay, so now we've entered into the castle and we sensed a presence. We felt the need to go into a room and upon entering said room, we feel a tug on our sweater. You look behind you. There's nothing there and you frown. You feel something small and cold grasp your hand and you freeze. By the time you turn your head to look, you see nothing there. But there is something in your hand now. A golden locket. Your red and pink eyes widen as you realise that this is a locket to go with the chain. You pull the chain out of your pocket and sure enough, it fits perfectly for the clasp. Oh, how romantic. Rockets fell out of style before you were born, but you've seen them in the movies and read about them from books. They're supposed to be used to carry a picture of someone you love, or at least someone who's in your heart. It's a warm sentiment and you hold the locket in your hand. You can't help but think you'd like to see Sans inside. That would, wouldn't that be nice? Click. There's a clicking sound from the locket. You won't fill your hands and it pops open. A soft gasp escapes you. It is Sans. A smiling Sans. Sans who looks genuinely happy. Your heart warms and you hold the locket close to you. Your lips turn into a smile. Good for you. Good for you. You start from the whisper and you look around but you don't see anyone. You thank them for the chain and locket. You think it's time you leave the most haunted room and you head back into the hallway. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, We got a present from our ghost friend. Okay, now I've got to go and fight freaking Azul's go. I guess I can let you guys hear him talk at least once. Okay. Since I'm not going to record the fight with Asgore, even though I know he's got dialogue again, I will technically include Asgore's fight when I literally have to re-record this whole thing from start to finish when all the characters have voices, so here's a little taster of what King Asgore sounds like. Hello. And here we go! Finally after fighting Asgore for a bit there, you burst through the volley, only the barest scent of your sweater touched that wretched fire and it was seared right off. There goes your freaking sweater. Asgore spins a trident. Hmm. You tell him you don't want to fight him. That is not up to you, he says. Actually, it is. It is your choice as it is his. He glares at you. You oversimplify the situation and disregard the truth. This is a kill or ki be killed world, he points to you. Your hands may not be seen red, but it's only by sheer luck. No. No, he snorts derivatively. It's not by luck, it's by your choice, it's by your determination. Yeah! So keep a You will never harm someone. You will infinitely meet his gaze. 
Your past cannot be changed, but you in the present can. Asgore's eyes narrow. It is not killed or be killed, world. It's a save or be saved, girl. World. And that includes Asgore. You see the bearless flinch in his shoulder and he grips his trident tightly. You wax a nice tail, whoever it is useless in reality. There is no hope for change, not for anyone. You shake your head. That's not true. And why do you think that? You give him a grin. Besides, he's already talking to you. Like, seriously, if there was no hope, he wouldn't like, be freaking standing here idly talking to you. If there was truly no hope, he'd never listen to you. He's listening to you because he wants to be saved. You extend your hand to him. It's not too late. It's never too late. He can make peace now. He can leave this kingdom to the surface. And give them happiness. Huh. King Asgore looks at your hand with an unreadable expression. You. King Asgore then does the stupid decision of raising his trident and lowering his head. He will no longer meet your gaze because he chose violence. Seriously. He chose violence. I cannot, he says. Goodbye, Twinkle. He can't use the second trident and throws it at you. It never reaches you. The trident is obliterated by a red laser beam. Sans appears next to you and he glares at you. He immediately scolds you. What did they tell you? He takes up his trident. Don't go into the throne room, you dummy. I didn't go into the throne room. I didn't even get near the throne room. This freaking sneaky ass giant goat literally snuck up behind me. If it's anyone's fault, it's his fault. Scold him, not me. He's going off the script. He puts his jacket around you. Put this on. Your sword is practically useless now. And you hadn't noticed, but yes, it is now showing a lot of your bare skin. <laughs> <laughs> you slip Sans' jacket on and you can feel magic inside of it that tingles your skin and to your surprise the jacket adjusts to the size to better fit you how marvelous it smells like Sans and mustard judge king asgore coolly greets san your majesty returns san what brought this on san shrugs and smokes i want to retire fucking tired old shit <laughs> <laughs> your century is too young for that the king says this wouldn't happen to have anything to do with this human woman. Maybe, says Sun. What's it matter? The king of monsters shakes his head. Your feelings are fleeting, Sans. There's no hope for this. Maybe, says Sans. Honestly, I don't really care one way or another. He looks over at you. His red eye lights brighten. But she does. And that's enough for me. You would throw everything away for a single human. Nah, he says. I don't gotta throw away shit, he grins. Right? Your other majesty. Oh yeah, because Sans actually knew where Tori was the whole time, didn't he? Because him and Wingardings actually like hid her. So he just was like, yeah, I'm going to go get Mama Tori. I'm going to go tell her about him in case he tries to kill you. Right you are, judge, says the soft voice. You and Asgore looking looking surprised as Tori. As we are, the owner of the voice marched into the room. The goat monster's golden eyes are burning with ferocity. She is not alone in her march. Far from it. You see many monsters beside her. You see Frog in an absolute bloke, the Jaws from Snowden, Shire and the children you met at the waterfall, Metatron and Stav, and the royal guards with Papyrus and Jai at the lead. There are so many others. They fill up the room and surround you. Enough is enough, says Toriel. Tori? King Asgore says at her in blatant disbelief. You, you came back to me. No, she covered her bus. I came for the human, for Twinkle. It's not all about you. Why are you so senseless, man? She raises her chin and glares down at Asgore. And for monster kind, you take one step towards that woman, you will have to face me. And me, adds Papyrus, the dogs howl in unison, each holding of a stick. Siren sings, the judgment of the heart. It's over, says Sans. He gives you a toothy grin. We're tired of this, so unless you want to have a hell of a time. King Asgore looks at the monsters around him. Not only them, says a voice that feels familiar to you. The monster's part ways to make room for a new monster. He's a goat monster with bright golden eyes and red pupils, like Tori and Asgore. Trailing beside him is Dr. Althes. Tori gasps. Ezreal? Oh, um, hi, says Ezreal. Wasn't expecting to see you here, Mom. Tori rushes him and immediately hugs him. Ezreal? King Asgore's expression dark and sweariness. Is that truly you? It is, he says, awkwardly patting Toriel's back. I still see you haven't trimmed that awful beard of yours that seems to always be on your freaking face. Asgore's eyes widen and he suddenly grins and straights forward. My boy, my son, one awkward family hug at a time. Ezreal complains and besides, you're about to attack my friend. Friend? You look between Ezreal and Dr. Alphys. Wait, Flowey? 
Howdy, Flowey says. Well, says Ezreal. He gives you a grin. Glad to see you're okay. Uh, you are okay, right? Yes, you are. You run to him and hug him. Though technically, Asgore made you freaking partially naked because he literally destroyed your freaking jumper and tried to murder me. Technically, he did murder me. Tori notices and opens up her arms to let you also hug Ezreal. Ezreal hugs you both. You seem a little singed. Are you sure you're okay? Yep. Good. He says. Now, if you and mother will excuse me, I need to talk to father. As Toriel squeezes Ezreal and she reluctantly lets him go. You also let go. Ezreal steps closer to his father. King Asgore. Father, it is time this feud with humanity comes to an end. It is time the monsters return to the surface. Ezreal. No! Ezreal cuts him off. This isn't an argument or something for debate. You won't win this. You can't win this. I understand. I understand the war changed you. I know those memories are hard to let go, but it's time. Don't stop us. Twinkle has shown us that humans and monsters can be friends again. Let us try. Asgore stares at Ezreal. He smiles faintly. I cannot win this. No, but you can try if you want to fight all these. Asgore looks over you. Human. No, Twinkle. You said this world does not need to be kill or be killed. Do you truly believe that? You meet his gaze. Yes, yes you do. It is not kill or be killed. It is to save or be saved. You smile at Asgore and it's time for him to be saved now. Saying there's no way he's beating everybody else up. Then so we shall be, he utters quietly, and he drops his trident. And while he's not smiling, you think he is happy. And then there's only a couple of things left to do. You poke sounds and he turns to face you. The angel? You tell him you need to check up on a friend. You'll be right back. He squints. Who? You ain't get surprised. I don't like surprises. He says, too bad. And you're going to go now and help as freaking, not as, what am I talking about? It's Wingerdings. So we're going to go and help Wingerdings. So I will be back when we come back into another scene with Sans. So we've just escaped the void. We've talked with Wingerdings. He told us about what we needed to do. So... Now we left the void and apparently upon leaving it, you're gasping for air as soon as you leave. Sounds grasped your hand. Hey, what the fuck was that? You okay? You need me to get a doctor? Tori and Azrael rush over to you. What's wrong? Biscuits, you hated it there. But you know what to do next. You just need to catch your breath and reassure Sans first. Once you feel you can breathe properly, you explain you need to use the barrier to help a friend. Azrael and Tori will give you an odd look. This is for that dumbass, Sans flatly asks you. You nod. Is it safe? He asks you. You think so? All right, he says. Okay, says Ezreal slowly. I trust you. Come on, I'll lead you there. I'll, th I'll follow behind you shortly with the other monsters, says Tori. I just need a few words with Gory. Sans, would you please help your brothers keep the monsters in line? Sans looks like he's very much does not want to do that. Yeah, your majesty... You and Ezra will nod to that and leave. Okay, so we're going to leave Sans for a tiny bit. So we'll be right back when we're back with Sans. Because again, I'm only going to show scenes with Sans. So that way we keep with the Sans theme. At this point, we have successfully pulled Winged Dings out of the void and ourselves. But unfortunately, we are super tired after that. So yeah, we're going to read this part because Ezra is about to mention Sans. So that being said, once you are steady on your feet, Winged Dings steps back. Now, if you do not mind, I will excuse myself. I have a pair of brothers to find. Wingdings takes the power and leaves you and Ezra alone. Are you tired? He asks you. You admit you do feel something. Tired feels too small of a word. Exhausted more like it. Then here, he says as he picks you up bridal style. Let me carry you. He bumps his forehead against yours. It's only fair, right? You carried me. He then notices the locket around your neck. Oh, where did you get that? A ghost child. What? Never mind. The magic in the lock is shows who's in your heart, says Ezreal. He smiles, softened. I used to have a magic one. May I see inside? You open the locket and show Ezreal the picture inside. And he grimaces. I should have known. As your friend, I feel it's my obligation to say you can do much better than that trash bag. You give Ezreal a flat look. I can't help but feel he'll hurt you, he admits. But okay. Wait. Why are you looking away now? You pull Sans' hood up over your face, over you to cover your face. Ezreal chuckles. Okay, okay, no need to hide your face. If you're sure about him, how can I do anything else besides support you? You beam at Ezreal and pull the hood back down. He holds out a hand. There's a distortion magic in the air and a lock of the matches yours materializes. It falls into your lap since he is carrying you. I think this should go with you. You should give it to the other person. 
You asked the Ezreal if he's sure. Yeah, he leans down and presses forward against yours for a few seconds. I want you to be happy, Twinkle. You're my best friend. You tell Ezreal you feel the same. He's your best friend. My dearest ones, says Tori as she and Asgore approach you. Are you ready? You and Ezreal exchange joyous looks. Yes, together you and your companions leave the underground. You feel strong enough to walk in your own as you smell the fresh air, and Ezreal gently sets you down. He keeps a paw on your shoulder in case you need help. I got it, says Sans, and he comes to your side. Papyrus and wingy things are close behind him. Ezreal looks to you. Are you sure? You reassure Ezreal is okay, and it gives you a friendly nuzzle. Okay, call me if you need help, or if you want me to take out the trash. Suck my dick, weed! Ezreal casually flips Sans off as he leaves, but Sans doesn't care. You ask Sans if he can talk to him in private. He shrugs. He looks over his brothers. Eh, yeah. You don't mind giving us some space? I mind, says Wingdings blandly. Yeah, you're just being orny. <laughs> you're just being orny, argues <laughs> Sans. Yes, agrees Wingdings. You literally owe her your life. Don't waste it by driving me to murder, says Sans. So violent. Wingy Things clicks his tongue and shakes his head in disapproval. Come on, Wings. I do not want to have to clean up after you two if you do fight, says Papyrus. You are both very inconsiderate of those around you. Out. Out, says Wings and, Papy Wings and Sans. I mean, he's not wrong, agrees Sans. Yes, maybe we should be better, remarks Wingy Things. The two each other give each other a long look. Nah, says Sans. Why mess with perfection? A crease wingy dings. See you later, Sans. Twinkle. He and the pirates leave you and Sans, and you tell Sans you have a gift for him. This seems to amuse him. Oh, yeah? You hold up the locket. He gives you an odd look, but does pick it up. He examines it. These things used to be pretty popular. Special magic inside. You know what it does, Angel. You do. You tug on the locket around your neck, and you open it to show him. He stares at his picture inside. His scarlet eyelids shrink to nothing. He's stiff, plainly shocked by what he sees. And then at once he turns a bright red. What? Are you serious? Me? You, you can do so much better. You don't want anyone else. You want him. You're crazy, delusional, absolutely insane, he scolds you. Why me? Does he really want you to list the reasons right here? He remembers the two of you are in a semi-public place and fiercely shakes his head. No, no, no. Ah, shit. He looks down at the locket in his red-gloved hand. You really want me to have this one? You tell him you do. I ain't gonna open it anytime soon, you hear me? You can't look inside. Well, it ain't got it. Sounds blusters. That's okay. He can't look inside yours at any time. He covers his face with one hand. Fuck, stop being so damn cute or else I'm gonna get seriously pissed and kiss your ass. You somehow doubt that. He groans, but you are right. He won't. That being said, he shouldn't threaten you. You have to teach him a lesson, which Ollie means. You grab both sides of his face and you give Sans a bunch of kisses. You immediately feel his magic wrap around your soul and you are lifted up in the air. Nah, none of that, he says, a crimson hue forming under his eye socket. You're trying to give me a heart attack, Angel? You agree to behave? Good. He sets you down and he holds out his hand. It takes her a few moments to realize what he's asking for you. You place the matching locket inside. He slips it on. Shut up, he warns. Don't say a damn word. You wisely do not say a word, but you do smile widely. He grabs your hand and starts to tug you along. Stop smiling. You want to float again? You giggle to yourself. It was fun floating. He. <laughs> and also, this is why I made a sprite for him that has the locket on. He <laughs> he Okay, so, it is dark outside, yet brightening with every second. You hear gas from the monsters around you, and you hear chopbacks sobs. You hear oohs and ahs and whimpers and hiccups, and you hear them whispering and speaking to one another as they all exit the underground to stand on a ledge overlooking the mountain. The barrier had been at a cave entrance, and there is a wide overlook as it showcases the forest at the bottom of the hill. And the city is a rest at the end of the forest. Tall skyscrapers climb into the sky, each building bright with light. The monsters nose and point to look at it, their voices getting louder, and then all goes silent when the first crack of light peeks out from the horizon. No one speaks, no one moves. It is their first sunrise and they watch it in complete silence. When you look around, you see so many of them openly crying. 
Their tears falling down their face and some have collapsed to their knees holding their hands over their mouth to keep from weeping out loud. You smile. Your own eyes burn. Yes, this is it. It's not a kill be killed world. It is a save or be saved world and you saved him. Them. Sam squeezes your hand and you look over him. His red eye lights waver in their socket. That's... that's the sun? He asks you. Yes. It's gorgeous, he says. Yes. It's warm too, but not like Hotland. Yes. Huh. Sans looks over you. A smile on his face, small and sincere. Thank you, sweetheart. The two of you take a seat beside each other, your fingers intertwined. You enjoy the feeling of the morning sunlight on your face. It looks like you've been trapped underground for almost a full day. Your determination carried you through without rest. But now that you see the sunrise, you feel your whole body relax. Exhaustion starts to press upon you, and you lean into Sans. He gives you a knowing look. Go ahead and get some rest, Angel, he whispers to you. I'll keep an eye on things from here. You have nothing to worry about. When put like that, you close your eyes and completely at ease. Hope you have sweet dreams, Twinkle. Yes. Sweet dreams, Twinkle. Your journey has ended and you have more than earned this rest. Sleep well beside him. When you wake up, knowing that you'll be ready to face whatever comes next, no matter the obstacle, no matter the enemy, no matter the foul, you will be okay because you have you. True happy ending, Sans is right. So we're gonna chorus go down here. You, let's see. It really seems like everything is worked out for the best. Your journeys, your struggle, none of it was in vain, and you saved them. All of them. And you didn't make it out alone. The Gaster family moved to the surface right next door to you, and your new home as a VIP ambassador. You had to move into a magically secured home of your choosing in the city. You and Sans see each other daily. While not an active boyfriend date man, he's very attentive and protective of you, due to your status. It's not uncommon to find Sans popping up at your job to ensure you're safe. After work, the two of you will indulge in a variety of comfort activities like watching movies together, napping, stargazing, or playing video games. He's got much better of receiving physical affection too. And while you'll miss his reactions, it would be nice to not get levitated into another room every time you wanted to cuddle him. He did retire from being the judge, it is position no longer needed. Instead, he studies the fusion of magic and technology with Wingadings. He seems much happier doing that. Well, he could just be happy because of you. You are a sweetheart after all. While happy to have a boyfriend date mate, you make sure to not lose touch with your friends that you've made. Most notably, Ezreal has become a huge part of your life. He became the new king of monsters that helped you integrate the two societies. You were dear friends at work and outside. He also gives the second best hugs. Sans, of course, is the first in your heart. You spend time with Tori and Asgore every so often, and Tori bakes you a special pie and loves to give you hugs. You hang out with Papyrus and Ndai, and you're a semi-regular on Metaton's new show. Show on the surface. You attend all of Shannon's concert and the first to buy her new album, The Judgment of the Heart. You visit the school in that place, where the monster kids start to attend, the infusing arts introduce you to their new human friends, and you have to of course talk them out of jumping off another waterfall with their new friends multiple times, because for some reason kids just want to do that all the time. They want to attempt to like nearly murder their friends. You meet up with the dogs, with all of the dogs from Snowden every month for a game of poker, which you suck at a lot. Sans finds it possibly adorable and teasing you about it consistently consistently. Everything is as it should be. Everyone is happy and you're the reason for it. Thank you Twinkle. Thank you for falling into a Thank you for showing kindness. Thank you for seeing determined and thank you for being you. The end. Alright so we're at the end of our adventure for Sansa's route at least. So there is one bonus scene I have not uploaded yet. So here is my deal for all of you. Five likes on this video and I will get the Sans proposal bonus scene up on the channel for you once the goal is hit i will actually put it up on the channel the day the goal is hit five likes okay 10 likes on this video and i will get papyrus's right up for you guys okay five likes for sansa's bonus scene that i haven't uploaded on the channel which is the sans proposal 10 likes and you will get papyrus's route up okay does that seem fair for everyone good fantastic great and we've also got another game coming which i'm also kind of like all over the place and kind of like anxious because i'm trying to get everything ready and get stuff done and then there's the whole thing with sunny day track that i also need to like sort out as well so i'm kind of like all over the place and scatterbrained so yeah so again five for the bonus ten for the papyrus right okay great fantastic hit those goals and we will get those up okay Bye for now. There was a bunch of other stuff I was supposed to say, but I can't remember and I really need to go and sit down and like not stress out for a bit.